स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर सेशंस ऑन प्रिवेंटिव ऑनकोलॉजी कोर्स वी हैव बीन कंटिन्यूइंग विद कैंसर डिटेक्शन मेथड so it's actually why we are going for the third session for the for this particular topic is because of the importance of cancer detection using precision oncology or using so as we have been always i've been always been uh, mentioning right no more one size fits all it is like each patient has to have the therapy and the diagnostic tailored to their to tumor proto tumor molecular signatures so last two sessions we've really dealt with uh, what are exactly cancer det detection methods what exactly are biomarkers what exactly are the detection methods for uh, different uh, cancer types for your breast for your lung and all that now uh, because of this importance you know uh, so uh, now it's like this is a very much an emerging and in the much needed field this particular cancer detection uh, or the diagnostic methods using molecular technologies so instead of uh, instead of going further into the molecular technologies i'm now uh, confining to the uh, tumor liquids uh, biopsies in this particular session so what do you mean by a tumor liquid biopsy so for, so ba basically we will look at it what are the non in, in so this is a very much a preferred uh, tool of uh, sample collection for uh, cancer uh, therapies and cancer diagnostics now so the whole diagnostic the molecular signatures for a particular tumors are basically now tra traveling towards this particular uh, sampling of uh, tumor liquid uh, biopsy basically uh, as we go on towards the end of the session you will completely understand what is exactly tumor liquid biopsy why is it advantages over your regular biopsy methods and uh, it is particularly it is much more preferred because of its uh, uh, non invasive uh, nature so before we further go on so just a very quick um, brush up of uh, how do you stratify the molecular uh, of uh, human cancer so it's just not like a complete broad cancer types you even have your uh, for example your er minus and your er pairs where you have your luminal a positive luminal b and then you have the braca then look okay, for your colorectal you have the uh your uh, cimps mmr and very very importantly the most heterogeneous uh, of all uh, one of the most heterogeneous of all cancer types your lung cancer non squamous cell lung carcinoma see how many different stratifications is there just imagine for one patient for one particular tumor can we have drugs for all this particular or uh, driver mutations yes so if you aid a clinician in exactly identifying what mutation the patient harbors you know it really uh, helps the uh, uh, clinician to choose a particular uh, inhibitor for example a tka a tki inhibitor if they are egfr positive so the similarly for uh, your prostate you have the different stratification and for the melanomas you have the uh, braf uh, mutations so for the gastric it's the heart and for mostly for your uh, um, pancreatic you have the keras and all so now usually it's like uh, as we all know cancer arises because of a consequence of mutations in genome of cancer cells so comprehensive views of cancer genome also uh, there there is uh, always reveal that there is always a lot of heterogeneity uh, among all tumors uh, most of the tumor types and 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 it is very important this molecular taxonomy of all this uh, tumor for, for example for your solid tumor, organ uh, tumors it has to be informed so for, so as to aid clinical de decisions and treatment and uh, level of sensitivity of conventional uh, clinical trial uh, approaches they have to be evaluated so this is very very important so this degree of fractionization or or your uh, stratification it may increase over the time as much as the knowledge of this particular uh, molecular signatures of each cancer type is totally increasing so there is like um, so so there as much there are the phenotypic tales you know uh, of multiple 
variants are long. Uh, so, these cancers which where dominant phenotypes are known to exist, the residual uh, subtypes like here for example, may be very very uh, complex or heterogeneous. So, for example, so that is why they may be for example, here this may be a, a bit difficult to treat. So, for example, so now what we saw here earlier slide, we just show how the uh, classification of uh, cancers according to the uh, uh, different organ specific. Now, for example, you just reverse your X and Y here. So, you have your biotype classification. So, estrogen dependent is the breast, then you have the several subtypes, then uh, ABL like kinase dependent. So, these are the particular uh, different types of cancers. So, then you have your EGFR dependent, here you have your uh, lung cancer and the colon cancer. Then if you have your head 2, you have your breast, gastric and the pancreatic or the PDAC. So, again you say ALK inhibitor responsive. So, you are tra stratifying, you are classifying according to the particular drug. So, for you have your uh, lung cancer and all then uh, your homologous recombination defective you have the breast ovary and the, prank, uh, the pancreatic. Then for the BRAF mutant you have the melanomas. So, like that so on this is again your based on your biomarkers or your uh, what we have discussed. So, you have already classified cancer here. So, this is an uh, so this is a simple alg uh, uh, algorithm which is already uh, recommended by the uh, national societies of cancer uh, so for uh, for predictive BRCA testing in, in a particular tum uh, tumor so so here patients with recurrent uh, high grade serious opinion tubery or uh, tubal or primary peritoneal carcinoma, they are uh, considered for an olaparib uh, maintenance therapy here. So, where, whereas for uh, patients who have uh, unknown BRCA status or pre or patients who could have been tested negative for BRCA germline mutation, you know, uh, so so there where, where if they have uh, uh, BRCA mutations, there is like this is uh, it is eligible for ter therapy. So patients who have previously been tested positive for germline BRCA mutations are eligible for therapy, and they do not need uh, further. Uh, testing actually. So, this is a pre, uh, algorithm for predictive uh, BRCA. So, the similarly you have your uh, algorithm for your non squamous cell lung uh, cancer uh, molecular testing. So, this is like in our institute it is a very um, uh, well established molecular testing. So, we adapt here here the qPCR. So, and uh, the NGS as well. So, here what happens is like first after the patient. So, how do they take the biopsy? So, once the patient comes with a stage 4 uh, um, uh, or a stage usually mostly present patients present here and the later stages st stage 3 or 4. So, the biopsy bit an excision biopsy is taken and it is uh, sent for molecular uh, testing in the EGFR and the ALK retros. So, we do this particular panels here. So, and uh, here in the EGFR if the patient is positive they go for the TKI, TKI inhibitors. So, that is how the targeted therapy your, your uh, TKIs are administered for EGFR positive. So, whereas here in the ALK also we have the QPCR, but there is an ALK IHC also it is uh, recommended here uh, where uh, you have the IHC positive and the ALK uh, IHC and or even the FISH also they do that. So, suppose if negative any of these te tests are negative, you say it is like this particular patient is wild type for EGFR, ALK, cross and uh, KERAS. So, the tumor board uh, decides you know is it like should we stop this particular uh, test then they do they have to test for other markers like your red, met, hair and BRAF. So, this is how this is a typical algorithm for uh, uh, lung cancer which is adapted all over. Now, first we really understand now we have really understood you need a particular sample you need you have to go for molecular the signaturing of the particular tumor to move further for a diagnostic for stratification to predict the relapse. So, whatever it is. So, now how do we go? So, where exactly is the sample? So, first exactly the first the preferred sample is the uh, I mean first 
initially traditionally conventionally or until now it is like for example uh, this is from the lymph node definitely the tumor so this is one but the biopsy of this particular tumor so where they do an ffp so it's a ffp is nothing but your fresh frozen paraffin emb embedded uh, uh, samples where and it is can be stored in room temperature for long but um, the problem is uh, you per, your uh, the patient has to be subjected to an invasive procedure here it's not so easy especially you know you want to see the for after for the follow up patients you know you really can't uh, say that you know can we really uh, can we can i go for a, it's not so easy like how you take a blood or a sputum or or a urine sample like that so it's it's, it's not very much um, so easy so this particular uh, uh, tumor biopsy is invasive it takes longer biopsy it could be because sometimes you know uh, because uh, given the heterogeneous mass of your tumor right as i always tell it may not be very sensitive so the suppose uh, the two two different bits sometimes you end up having uh, some uh, the same uh, from the same patient from two different uh, bits of biopsy some one bit may show a wild type it's of course it's not very but sometimes it may show a mutant and it of course it takes a high cost of sample uh, extractions and then it is very well clinically validated it is an age old golden standard conventional methods and it's not only that you can even go for other histopathological markers like your hair to or what different other markers whatever you want to take it up and uh, of course it um, uh, it is uh, not capable of uh, assessing the tumor uh, evolution it can't really uh, how the tumor no and it's not uh, uh, and you cannot really monitor uh, monitor uh, no real time monitoring of the drug response suppose you want to check for the drug response this particular biopsy uh, the regular the conventional method you will not be able to do it and uh, you cannot subject the patient to repeated surgeries and it does not Mm, as I said, um, it's not does not reveal how heterogeneous your tumor is. Whereas when you want to come to liquid biopsy, which I'll really definitely go detail in all this particular session, it's like uh, like your blood. So these are all your entities which you look out for. You look out for CGDNAs. You have uh, you for you have you look out for CTCs. Then your EVs. I'll explain all of them. What e exactly are they in detail? So basically, your liquid biopsy is particular this way. You just take a five ml or a seven ml required to extract or enrich this particular entities from the blood and from this particular entities you can really go for your qpcr or your digital pcr ddpcr and then you can go for um, uh, the comprehensive uh, sequencing analysis so basically so what so the patient is coming back to your clinic after two months of the of uh, his chemotherapy and you want to check the, is there a chance for this particular patient will have a relapse or how does it go so it's a, this is a very very easy you just need 5 to 7 ml of this blood so this liquid so that is why we call it liquid biopsy where it is minimally invasive it takes less time it is highly sensitive because you look for this particular an analytes and the biomarkers which are very much specific to that particular cancer type and it is uh, low cost of sample isolations but not always and it does not provide the uh, and biggest advantage is you will not have your histological pathological evaluation markers but it can uh, it really uh, monitors you will be able to monitor how the tumor evolves and uh, it is a real time monitoring for all your drug response you for example uh, you give a patient one particular drug and you want to check is he responding so you can have definitely you can use this to uh, this particular entities as markers and then it requires the uh, spatial and uh, it, it definitely reveals here yeah, lot of spatial and temporal tumor heterogeneity so this therefore liquid biopsy is a simple and non invasive alternative to surgical biology which enables doctors to discover a range of information you just not have only a simple positive negative you can have a lot of information from a simple 5 ml taking a blood sample so so this is like because you have traces of your cancer dna in the blood sample so this is, so therefore research on uh, this liquid biopsy ss is really gaining lot of momentum and it has expanded rapidly and many different biomarkers uh, in distinct body fluids not necessarily your blood you can even have your saliva urine all that you know uh, so it can be uh, they can be especially this is very very relevant in your so solid tumor panels so because of this uh, 
uh, repeated whenever the patient comes for uh, chemotherapy say comes his, uh, once in two months or uh, tw twice in a month he comes over. So, you can take uh, blood samples and you can uh, monitor uh, uh, the treatment response or uh, disease progress. So, what are the different entities we analyze in liquid biopsies and their application. So, you can have various analytes uh, analyzed in liquid biopsies. For example, your CTCs, then your CTDNA, your exosomes and then your tumor proteins. So, now for uh, decision for a particular temporary usually rely on this analysis of the tumor tissues for the expression of your particular uh, or a particular gene or a specific uh, genomic uh, aberration or alteration. So, usually you, these are uh, mostly analyzed by IHCs or fish that is fluorescence in, uh, in situ hybridization. So, this is like uh, this analysis is usually restricted to this particular tumor alone. But however, sometimes you know this tumor may not be really accessible. So, so this and I mean accessible in the sense for a biopsy and uh, and these tumors as I said they are always changing heterogeneous over the time as uh, so as the course of the therapy the tumor uh, evo evolves you know either it may really become more resistant to or the patient may respond to that particular te therapy. So, so, th this uh, thus um, the you metastasis at the time of relapse. So, they may have uh, suppose if at the time of relapse you know there is metastasis, it will have a different uh, a molecular characteristics than a uh, different than the tumor of the primary origin. So, so this uh, thus restaging of metastasis by biopsy is possible, but it is invasive. And some size such as your brain or especially the brain, you know, the gliomas, and for them to do a research to do a rebiopsy is a little bit difficult. Thus, uh, because thus there is like a no, so you have uh, found a solution now a liquid biopsy to analyze this particular uh, entities. So, what is it? What do these entities provide? So, you can really configure if there is a therapeutic resistant, as I mentioned. So, you have the mRNAs, then you have to look for the non coding uh, RNAs, NCRNAs, then your RNA splice variants, and then you look for the muta mutational profiles, which is very very uh, important and then you look for molecular diagnosis and then as I mentioned your personalized treatment uh, strategy from this particular analyze you can really adapt and then uh, you can even uh, look for the different uh, all this uh, variations whatever we started looked into the basics of cancer. So, then uh, you can even look for your disrupted DNA like your um, and your epigenetic changes then your translocations your CNV is very very importantly the copy number uh, variations you know especially for uh, leukemias you can really look into it uh, into this and then uh, you can even ascertain your uh, tumor heterogeneity and then as we uh, recollect our first two slides we can uh, stratify them uh, or uh, you can classify the tumor subtypes. So, the first class uh, what we are going to look into it is your uh, CTCs. So, this is uh, your uh, circulating tumor cells. So, from how do they originate from the primer, uh, primary tumor, but they are distinct from the primary tumor cells with they have the EMT transition properties. Recollect our first sessions, basic sessions where we said uh, about a, a, epithelial mesenchymal transition. So, that is why they because of this transition only this tumor cells they are able to uh, break away from the primary tumor uh, and then they are able to uh, facilitate uh, intra intravasation uh, that is how they are able to enter the main blood stream and then they are disseminated uh, in the clusters of uh, circulating tumor cells. So, just keep in mind all three throughout this uh, session your CTCs is nothing but circulating in uh, uh, tumor uh, circ uh, tumor cells uh, CTCs. Sometimes you know these CTCs they may perish in the circulation it is not like that you know once the cancer cell it can survive anywhere sometimes you know uh, so they can even uh, perish in the bloodstream itself and uh, the, and then uh, maybe they or they can inf infiltrate distant uh, uh, organs. So, this is uh, this is like the with this interaction between the CTC and the blood environment is very very critical um, how the uh, T, uh, CTCs escape the uh, in the immune surveillance in the uh, blood. 
so this is like as such this uh, this particular property is very well associated with that metastatic uh, mechanism of uh, the ctcs and the met mechanistic metastatic property of that particular tumor so, it took a long while for uh, researchers to you know to identify why, uh, how this uh, CTC is you know uh, 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 the critical role of CTC is in this uh, particular cancer uh, metastasis. So, because why is it took a long while because you know it is a very technically difficult to uh, extract your circulating tumor cells CTCs. So, for, so this is exactly your uh, uh, CTC then uh, you even have uh, this is all your healthy cells then uh, the phagocytosis then uh, this is your mutant DNA. So, along with the other cells the uh, CTCs are also uh, present. So, you really need to have a technique which will enrich only your circulating tumor cells. So, this is again like you know how this particular uh, diagram says how the release of single CTC or CTC cluster from pa the parent tumor it will allow into this invasion into the this particular cluster. So, they will survive first thing as I mentioned before they have to survive uh, in the circulation and then again you have a fraction of this disseminate where uh, they have to establish extravasation at the secondary site where their fraction of this disseminated cells can enter uh, dormancy in a distant organ such as your bone marrow and then they regain again the tumor properties after particular uh, time and then they will be like uh, you know establishing uh, metastasis over here. So, this is the particularly of the importance of how exactly a circulating tumor cells are present or in the blood. So, basically you know if you have a very high end uh, uh, MRIs or your PET CTs you know usually you will be uh, can detect your primary tumors and metastasis that are very well established. So, that imaging. So, to be visible in that well in your PET or your uh, MRI or PET CT or your MRI the cell should be greater than 10 to the power 9 number. So, just imagine you know by the time. So, but whereas using your liquid biopsy or the CTC technology suppose you are able to enrich this particular CTCs you know is not it fantastic that you know in the DNA level itself you even the when the cell quantity is very low also you will be able to, to pinpoint it as a uh, early diagnostic uh, tool. So, this again it is just a simple uh, how exactly what I have mentioned in this you know. So, you basically uh, that is the comp uh, so usually the complex metastatic process as we have always uh, discussed right from the beginning it, inc it includes tumor cell invasion in your primary site and then extravasation into your uh, sorry intravasation into the circulation then survive, survival in the circulation as your uh, CTCs. So, this uh, and then uh, so why I am talking so much in detail about is like you know uh, so they are this they usually are assumed to be the substrate of metastasis. So, for example, a patient is undergoing a pa a therapy. So, can we not uh, look for the CTCs and then look for like is there a possible cause of uh, the, this particular is the patient it can be used as a, a scale to evaluate the response of the therapy. So, so this is like uh, so because of this uh, as I mentioned of this uh, technological challenge of uh, enriching them. So, this CTCs have been a little bit tough, but still the recent technologies with many other uh, tools they have been able to uh, enrich CTCs. So, in this slide we will see how CTCs are enriched. So, because you have other cells also, so blood you know you have other cells in the blood. So, now what are the different methods you know you, so based on their physical uh, properties uh, CTCs uh, they, uh, they can be separated from the uh, other uh, cells like your uh, um, size density. So, and then sometimes the CTCs have the specific antibodies and then that is how you know there is like they can definitely uh, definitely uh, bind to this particular antibodies and through the immunoaffinity you can clearly say that 
yes you can enrich ctcs and very fantastic tool microfluidics which is really uh, emerges uh, emerging now you know where it's like you know where uh, it can exist uh, you can really use this to filter out your or uh, ctcs from the rest of the uh, uh, other samples like from your other blood like your uh, uh, plasma and your uh, this one uh, serum so, detection and characterization of the CTC involves it, uh, various uh, uh, techniques that uh, uh, require that employ primers. So, this is a sequence dependent. So, what is do you do further after enriching them? You can uh, go for uh, the sequence uh, dependent techniques so, or maybe uh, like um, uh, either uh, the or maybe a deep sequencing. So, that is like uh, you go for the digital PCR then uh, you go for uh, where that is your personalized analysis of your rearranged ends then the tam se sequence that is your tabbed amplicon deep sequencing then uh, you go for your uh, cancer personalized uh, profiling uh, se se by deep sequencing so and then your uh, safe sequencing system like your uh, beaming so your uh, based on all this you know you can draw clinically uh, relevant uh, information which can aid during the progress of therapy or it can aid in therapy for uh, regarding this particular uh, tumor so then you can even also go for whole genome sequencing for the ctcs on the whole uh, exome sequencing so as i said uh, it can help in all this uh, this particular uh, uh, utility is for diagnostic prognosis then monitoring therapeutic and then one very important thing is can you uh, look for uh, therapeutic uh, resistance so this is how the uh, the that is like there are three subsets you know that is like usually your uh, epithelial uh, in the transition this is all the different subsets of your ctcs one very important uh, technology which uh, uh, which is employed is your cell search uh, system or your cs which and which and uh, which enables your enrichment and the enumeration of your ctc circulating tumor cells so now like you know uh, so this is like uh, we know that uh, it's well established that that association of ctc is with the poor clinical outcome for cancer patients uh, it, it has been demonstrated in uh, many several uh, clinical studies so for this uh, uh, proper for this uh, uh, identification of this targets and then stratification you know and uh, to know underlying mechanism of uh, resistance you know so it's uh, so this is very important to uh, analyze the primary uh, tumor however sometimes you know for this uh, especially for this particular primary tumors like your uh, sometimes even the brain you know the lung you know uh, so that is why there is a there so we are using this particular cell search uh, system and then uh, there is a lot of this per clinical uh, applications you know so basically this earlier system that cs system it provides uh, uh, it's like uh, it provides an uh, opportunity to apply an assortment of accompanying tests you know and techniques for further characterization of uh, and classification of your ctcs and then enrichment of this uh, and co-enrichment it, it it usually co-enriches the other uh, leukocytes but uh, however uh, many of these particular uh, tests have been identified in larger uh, populations also so you have the well designed uh, so from this uh, where so you have well designed instruments for isolation of single ctcs from the uh, from the using the cell search uh, system and uh, so that is like and then you again you even have uh, ctcs enriched by your profile kit and they allowed uh, sub uh, they allow a lot of your uh, comprehensive analysis of this individual tumor cells see isn't it beautiful like you know when you go for a biopsy you have a uh, 
or a lot of tissue or tumor tissue which may be a lot, so many cells it may even have your uh, other uh, tumor uh, environment cells like your epithelial cells your fibroblasts and all that whereas when you have a technology when you can really take a homogeneous uh, uh, cells you know here so they definitely to search for a very good molecular marker is it's quite uh, easy so that is why the whole diagnostics of cancer is moving towards this particular directions of liquid biopsies so that is why you know so so usually from uh, so ctc is not limited to merely detection of you know usually the cell search system is not detect uh, is not only for the detection of ctcs from cancer patients but also uh, you you have to use an appropriate kit in that particular uh, downstream process uh, which will uh, absolutely aid in the uh, diagnosis uh, or molecular characterization of your ctcs so here you have the even your ctc cxc kit you know where the deep array by and micro manipulator for the uh, and the moflo cell sorter cell erect so you you can even go for your fish here you can go for your mutational analysis as i mentioned pro so usually sometimes it's for your low expressing antigens all this particular uh, mutational analysis can be used so now slowly we will move to another entry which is called cell free dna or circulating tumor dna for precision oncology it is very 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 important to know what exactly a cell free dna and a circulating tumor dna is so what is cell free dna it is it is usually uh, comprised of your double stranded uh, dna which range from 150 to 200 base pairs and it circulates mostly in uh, blood so uh, so its release usually uh, uh, happens via the uh, apoptosis necrosis and on uh, phagocytosis and uh, it, so that is how it uh, uh, releases happens so you mean uh, normal healthy individuals the cell free dna usually uh, originates from the uh, uh, usually hemopoietic cells such as your wbcs uh, erythrocytes and your endothelial cells so normal tissue sometimes which undergoes uh, damage like your trauma or infection or ischemia or inflammation that time also cell free dna could be present so active secretions like the uh, via the exosomes or protein ca complexes uh, will contribute to the cell free dna you uh, the thing with this uh, the important disadvantage with this is it has a very short half life ranging between 65 16 minutes and maximum till 2 and a half hours to uh, maximum till uh, 200 minutes but uh, some but and then it gets uh, uh, it is cleared from the uh, circulation uh, via the nucleus action and it's excreted into the urine so what do you so suppose the same imagine a patient uh, with the uh, cancer going for liquid biopsy you take the extract the cell free dna from the plasma which is now very simple and then you go for analyzing uh, uh, your uh, first thing how do you analyze your cell free dna and the ct dna one more term and then quantifying your total uh, cell free dna and then uh, analyze the mutations in your cell free dna for example all the lung uh, for the th treatment uh, therapies they are using the t70 790 uh, mutations uh, to check so this is uh, like during the course of therapy so again very very importantly in precision oncology the importance of liquid bi biopsies is is the need of our now and then uh, then again you can even uh, go for uh, analyzing the uh, again quantifying the methylation patterns of the your ct dna so the clinical life, uh, this particular uh, uh, for this particular cell free dna includes your uh, screening diagnosis uh, screening or diagnosis then to stage molecular uh, signatures or to select for treatment uh, selections then treatment monitoring as i said and very importantly your treat treatment resistance and early uh, recurrence or detection so this is like now whatever we call this they are this is now like all these markers they have been uh, recommended as companion diagnostics test cdx this is a very very important terminology for precision oncology by this uh, european medicine agencies and your fda so this is like all this particular uh, uh, molecular signaturing it's like uh, very very important to guide the thera therapeutic uh, decision making so you have the
the fraction of that cell free DNA. So that particular fraction of that cell free DNA that is derived from the tumors. It is named as your ctdna or your circulating tumor dna so we are introduced to three different concepts now as of now ctc circulating tumor cells then you are you are coming up to your cell free dna and then your fantastic term ctdna so this has uh, there that is like uh, now uh, over several uh, course of the time you know if you see that the cancer patients and the healthy individuals so that is if you see the le the length distribution so cancer uh, uh, patients uh, uh, represent a more fragmented pa pattern and co and uh, consequently shorter pattern than your healthy patients so this is like can we this is your first uh, point a tick mark you know to uh, to leverage to detect cancer without previ previous knowledge of your uh, genomic uh, alterations and so so here this itself you can monitor this can be a primary marker to monitor the t uh, evolving of the uh, tumor so cancer patients have high level of your cell free dna in their serum or plasma because of uh, more number of cells first thing and more number of cell necrosis or apoptosis and first very very important factor is tumor cells tend to divide more faster than your normal uh, normal cells right so that is why cell cell free cell free dna is uh, released in high uh, proportion so usually in the in the last few years you know uh, cell free dna and the uh, ct dna have uh, uh, have gained lot of attention as novel blood markers and uh, as a quantification and kinetic analysis of cell free dna and molecular profiling of this particular uh, ct dna uh, has been suggested for both predictive and prognostic values for many of this cancer types so it's just not like you know so you have your uh, plasma DNA, then you have your uh, differentially phased CT DNA fra um, uh, fragment ends. Then you can even uh, clearly uh, go for uh, cancer. You can clearly identify your uh, cancer driver genes expression using this particular CT DNA because it's the DNA which is originating from your tumor. So, just isn't it like a very high and uh, easy game to imagine itself, isn't it like where you can match your uh, genomic coordinates right only from the blood samples, isn't it? So, so you have the, you can clearly say what is the least expressed genes, then what is the highly uh, expressed genes here. So, just a continuation of my earlier slide, what is the source and metabolism of your cell free uh, DNA, where it is like you know, uh, so it is found in bloody fluids such as your blood and, uh, and it is derived, uh, it is coming from the three main processes from uh, the both from normal cells such as your uh, WBC as well as your uh, tumor cells. So, where, uh, where there is uh, apoptosis then you have the necrosis uh, so that is which is like uh, active uh, your caspase uh, dependent apoptosis and then uh, so your uh, necrosis will result in uh, larger uh, fragments of degraded dna and this uh, process will require uh, phagocytosis so that is your uh, digestion of this uh, dead cells so there is also an uh, process of active uh, secretion that releases cell free DNA into circ uh, into the circulation within either vesicles such as like either it is with through the uh, through your exosomes or uh, bound to your protein places. So as mentioned this uh, half life is very low 16 minutes uh, or, or only 2.5 hours and then it is eliminated from circulation by your there is uh, nucleus activity or by uptake in the liver and then uh, degradation by macrophages and then by slowly excreted by uh, the uh, urine now this is just you know uh, very first uh, uh, history for example uh, uh, how like you know how the first the uh, the first detection of the tumor derived DNA or your CT DNA is first uh, coming back from uh, way back in uh, 1948 by this uh, 
by Sorensen. So usually, uh, so uh, so different over the years, you know, uh, self DNA in different cancers has evolved with the effort of several uh, researchers, and then they have uh, d able to detect uh, the detect. Uh, mutant allele frequencies up to 0.01 percent and then uh, you know so for it is all like small small uh, steps you know where now we are able to use self uh, CT DNA for uh, as a, a very very important diagnostic especially with lung uh, cancer to monitor your 270, 790. So one, once patients uh, during the course of uh, therapy for lung cancer especially um, if they are with an easy GFR uh, mutation and they are on a TKI inhibitor. So, during the course of this inhibition, they develop uh, the resistance. This uh, patients do not respond to this treatment. So, then do you have any other mutations like your T790? So, this uh, T791 has been uh, 90 mutation, uh, can be checked using your self DNA in the uh, from the extracted from the plasma. And this is uh, very well uh, approved by the FDS. So, this is like, uh, so this uh, whatever the gene expressions and all that, so several groups have been in part. So, now what are the main samples? So, how do you get your uh, uh, samples? So, now what are the main steps for blood sample processing and self-free DNA extraction? So, first as I mentioned, you need EDTA tubes. So, so or any of this uh, stabilizing tube, so which will have, which are uh, company specific and then uh, you can store this uh, blood for up to 4 hours in their uh, room temperature and uh, this particular uh, tubes, they can be stabilizing tubes for up to 14 days, which are specific for your uh, CTDNA. And then uh, centrifugation like sometimes you know uh, 12,000 uh, uh, G for 10 minutes or uh, for 16,000 G for 10 minutes, uh, two steps of centrifugation you do and then you aliquot it and then uh, store the plasma. So, this is all steps you know where uh, you will have uh, flexibility with your liquid biopsies. And then uh, so now you know. Uh, so, first one important thing is that uh, your blood uh, collection tubes is uh, very, very, you have different types, you know, from different manufacturers such as your streck tubes uh, from the BCT uh, and the cell free DNA collection tubes from the chiogens that is your PAX, PAX uh, gene blood. They are called the C CF uh, DNA tubes and the Norgen tubes. So, they have their, these companies have their uh, pre-coated with the preservatives, you know. So, the, all this particular uh, tubes they are having with their, of course, pre-coated with the preservatives as well as the uh, anticoagulants. And then, uh, and then they have a typical recommendations how exactly you have to do the centri centrifugation. Uh, so, so and as I mentioned before, the storage time also can be varied according to this particular manufacturer, uh, particular manufacturing, manufacturing. So, then once you separate the plasma and the buff, uh, uh, buffy coat, uh, so then will be the, usually it is a two step uh, procedure and then uh, after that, you know, it is usually the extraction of the cell free uh, DNA usually happens via the silica based membrane columns, magnetic beads. So, this is nothing but in all your chiogen for if you are familiar with your blood extraction, uh, DNA extraction from blood using your blood mini kits and uh, any which are mostly column based, which are silica column based. They have a uh, high affinity columns which can bind to the DNA. And then they even have the magnetic beads which can really bind to your DNA. So, then uh, then you look for, uh, so sometimes this is like uh, even you even have automated systems also, you know, for example, like your uh, Promega. For example, you just put your blood sample into the kit and then the whole, uh, so you that they have a wonderful machines or platforms to extract your cell free DNA and to give your best quality and quantity of this particular CT DNA. So, they and all the based on the set extraction uh, it kits also, you have the different uh, uh, yields also vary. So, according to the custom lab, you can ideally choose based on your econ economics, the cost also, you can choose what exactly kits you are going to employ.
for example, your Promega or the Airplat Biomaster systems, that is which has your uh, Mag Max free cell, um, Mag Max cell free DNA kits. So they they as I mentioned, uh, these kits will be working with different columns. So after you have the quality control where you uh, is you quantify and then you qualify and then uh, go for this analysis the downstream analysis. So, this is like uh, from the uh, colorectal uh, cancer for how it is really very well relevant in the clinical uh, decision making you know. For example, uh, colorectal cancer releases uh, D your DNA fragments into the circulation called cell free DNA and this cell free DNA mixes with uh, CT DNA. CT DNA and then uh, it mixes with your physiological cell free DNA. So, so physi physiological uh, uh, cell free DNA, so this is the your CT DNA and then after this is detected via the detectable in the peripheral uh, blood sample from, from the blood you can uh, take the CT DNA and then you can assess the tumor month and over the time. So, you can clearly see how uh, and uh, during the treatment uh, response also. So, at the time of surgery and during the time of at the time see at the point how he has uh, at the point of initial uh, before the response that is at the zero stage and then at relapse. See how do you can clearly see how the CT DNA levels clearly increase as the time progress. So, this is a very good marker uh, for uh, clo clo to monitor your clo colon cancer uh, disease stage. So, this is like uh, different methods like with other also like with the CTC also as I mentioned you have. Uh, so, for the CT DNA there are many uh, commercialized methods are available for uh, monitoring the genetic alterations in this particular CT DNA. So, to for the point mutations and the copy number variations, your chlor chromosomal aberrations. So, for the you can do the PCR, you can do the RT PCR, digital PCR, SNP arrays and then you even have the second generation uh, sequencing for your uh, CT DNA. And then uh, you even have your uh, uh, multiplex ligation dependent probe amplications, then your molecular combing, then you have the uh, comparative genome hybridization to identify your uh, CNVs copy number variation and chromosomal aberrations. So, usually this uh, uh, cell free DNA, they, several studies you know they have highlighted the importance to perform, uh, always it is important to check your QC quality controls on the isolated circular DNA. Suppose it is like uh, and if it is uh, highly, suppose if it is highly fragmented and it should be, its size uh, should be ranging from 22 and uh, 220 base pairs with a minimum peak at 167 base pairs. So, that is like uh, it is like it corresponds to the length of the DNA which is wrapped around a single nucleosomes. So, that is like you have to quantify and qualify this particular uh, cell free DNA or the CT DNA and, uh, and it should be uh, you should not be able to confuse it with your genomic uh, DNA. So, this is very very important. So, capillary electrophoresis was used to measure the size of your uh, DNA fragments before and then uh, it is able to give your estimate of, of uh, absolute concentration of the CT DNA or the cell free DNA. And then as I said you know you have the QPCR and the DDF is, uh, uh, DDPCR methods which can evaluate uh, the ampli amplifiability of the uh, cell free DNA as well as your concentrations and the integrity which is very very uh, important. So, that is uh, so this is like uh, uh, it, it should uh, so for example, uh, so, there is absolutely there are several uh, essays are coming up in the market which may not really uh, require uh, a reference sample and a calibration work, uh, uh, curves. So, can but very very important uh, to keep in mind your copy number uh, alterations as well as your uh, genomic DNA con contamination into mind while going with the CT DNA. Now, very interesting why what exactly after now you have come up with the liquid biopsy take a blood that is also very fantastic and then 
after you get to such loads of DNA, the first thing what a molecular biologist now would really go is for next generation sequencing. So, this is your backbone, this is the very fundamental aim or the fundamental end point need for the CGDNA for be it for lung or for breast or for cervix or anything. So, basically this, uh, this is like uh, suppose you start with your uh, whole blood uh, collection in specialized in your CS cell free DNA tubes. The plasma, uh, you separate the plasma which contains your cell free DNA via centrifuges and then uh, you extract the cell free DNA from the plasma. So, usually, uh, usually you know, uh, then uh, you go for uh, simplified uh, Illumina uh, library. So, this all we will be learning in the further sessions in the future session exactly of what is the library preparation and all that for NGS and then Illumina library fragments as a result of your uh, NGS library preparation. So, here the dark and the green blue plus uh, represent the Illumina uh, adapters here for uh, the P5 and P7 which, uh, which, will, uh, which will really uh, hybridize to the uh, flow, flow cell and uh, uh, subse subsequent bridge amplification after ligation to the cell free DNA fragment. So, sample specific indices which are used to identify the patient samples are typical in your uh, this one. So, they are uh, they are particularly typical in your uh, in the dual format and here they are shown as your uh, uh, I5 and your I7. So, so, you have the again your unique molecular identifiers that is your UMI. They will serve, serve, serve as your molecular specific barcodes. So, which will uh, enable the bioinformatic filtration of amplification or, or maybe sometimes due to the sequencing error to uh, to uh, analyze a um, very uh, high quality variant to analyze a very high, this is a very very important point. So, coming to C here you have the sequencing by synthesis SBS on an Illumina element which allows uh, uh, for one fluorescently tagged uh, nucleotide to be added to the growing read per uh, cycle. For your G, your A, C's and D's are tagged with your pink um, uh, pink, blue, green and yellow fluorochromes. So, thus after this the uh, instrument has converted the captured images uh, to base uh, calls, the data is converted into your what is you call this your uh, fast queue files containing your reads and the quality scores this is very important. So, since the reads and the fast sequels do not describe genomic, uh, they may not really describe the genomic uh, location of the read, you know, they, so this particular reads have to be aligned to your reference genome. For example, here in this case is the human genome. So, this is, uh, this alignment is referred to your, to as your SAMP file which is a binary counterpart called, which has a binary counterpart called your, your BAM file. So, the BAM file contains all informations uh, in original FASTQ, FASTQ file along with the mapping information of the read such as your genomic coordinations to which it is aligned. The BAM alignment file will also serve uh, uh, as the core data for diverse uh, downstream analysis example your uh, calling of your uh, SENAs uh, or variance estimation of your tumor fraction from your uh, uh, plasma and then uh, then then uh, calculation of the fra fragment size distributions or nucleosome mappings. And this is E is your uh, example of a clinical report summarizing the interpretation of your genomic alterations uh, detected from your uh, cell free DNA. So, this is very very important here for example, uh, you have this particular uh, genes here where where exactly the region then which segment then what size. Uh, so, is it like amplified yes and then uh, clinical relevance. So, this is how the particular uh, report uh, uh, is uh, presented and this reports have to be uh, so this, this report describes the detailed uh, genomic alterations alongside the uh, your uh, valial fre frequencies VAFs and uh, pathogenicity with potential clinical implications. 
so this is this should be uh, this particular report is like uh, so for example a lung cancer patient has come to the clinic you go through this ng take out the instead of going to the biopsy you take the dna and then go to the ct dna uh, uh, ct dna and then go for ngs analysis you get a report like this so how will you define the outcome of the disease or how will you uh, look do you want to have to change the therapeutic response so this is what is being discussed in your tumor boards and then it has to be uh, 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 related to the clean, uh, patient's clinical state, uh, status or your CPS. So, this is like a simple uh, table which I have made you know like for in different cancers what are the different markers uh, they have they have and the technical methods like you know and then what are the samples they are using. So, for example, in the hematological sample uh, malignancies like your leukemias you can take the plasma serum CSFs and then is used for uh, diagnosis and then uh, looking for this particular different mutations I, and you can even use it via your RT-PCR real time or the sequencing and then or your uh, droplet uh, digital PCR and then for the thy thyroid uh, cancer you know you have the self free DNA quantity and integrity as your index which can be determined by your qPCRs. And then uh, for the co colorectal uh, cancer, you have this this particular different uh, markers. And then uh, for this uh, so HPV also for using the duplex digital droplet PCR, you can take the uh, look for look out for the HPV cell free DNA. And then it can be used taken from the serum. It can be and this particular marker is used for diagnostics or predicting uh, response to therapy. And then uh, EBR via uh, EBV for uh, DNA from the nasopharyngeal uh, carcinoma. Like this, you know, as I mentioned, this is a fantastic example, the lung, you know, uh, you can even look for all this particular uh, mutations, but for uh, of importance is here T791, which is the uh, uh, most widely used in, uh, in marker for the uh, for the treatment response. Now, uh, very, very important, you know, this is all the different uh, uh, organizations which is uh, very very important only after their approvals any of suppose I come up with a different uh, biomarker I just cannot directly use it on the patient so I have to get approval of the different uh, pathological associations different uh, oncology associations and all this you know uh, for NCCN for your breast cancers and NCCN for your uh, so, they have different set of climates, uh, different set of guidelines. For example, for any particular uh, for plasma over serum, it is approved by the IASLC as well as your ASCOs. Uh, prioritize histological uh, diagnostics, yes, for some definitely they have they are only the recommended suppose you have if the tissue is in suppose the patient is in a very unfit condition to go for a biopsy yes that time they are recommended uh, these are the guidelines recommended to go for especially in the lung uh, definitely to go for a liquid biopsy plasma genotypic at progression uh, to detect to target uh, uh, alteration yes all this uh, organizations they are recommending it if plasma is uh, negative tissue biopsy if this particular biomarker is again suppose in the cell free liquid biopsy if it is negative then should I go for the tissue biopsy yes it is very much recommended all organizations recommend that suppose a positive actionable cell free DNA alteration is uh, can if suppose I detect any mutation alterations in the liquid biopsy can we go ahead with the initiative yes all uh, so that is like your liquid, bi liquid biopsy has gained a lot of uh, its own place as much equivalent to the tissue biopsy so is uh, uh, and, and so they recommend NGS is preferred for detecting fusions and uh, your reports should uh, uh, include what is the platforms they have used and what are the difference. So, what exactly the report which I have uh, shown. Now, coming to another uh, last analyte which we will be discussing in this session is your circulating tumor RNA and the exo exosomes. So, the what are circulating? 
microRNAs circulating miRNAs what we call it so they are also they are also considered important promising biomarkers for many uh, human diseases especially for cancer they meet several criteria for being a preferable the uh, biomarkers for uh, high specific because they are very very specific they are easily accessible and they are sensitive and they have been um, uh, this miRNAs are found in many biological uh, fluids and they are stable to some extent and they can be extracted from the uh, blood and from other liquid biopsies like for example the saliva for the oral uh, uh, cancers and then they are also highly specific for tissue or cell types for example your miRNA 122.5p is highly enriched in uh, liver, uh, liver cancer and uh, it is selective so this is like uh, so this is the so because of this specificity there we are able to have a possibility of using specific miRNAs to determine the uh, initiation and progression of the disease so this is like I do not want to go into real details so basically they are nothing but your uh, small non-coding RNAs that are that suppress gene expression both by inhibiting protein translation and promoting mRNA cleavage so just a very quickly how this uh, biogenesis of miRNA and this uh, uh, cellular export is uh, happening is they are uh, transcribed mainly by the uh, RNA polymerase so and uh, for, for and and uh, uh, for after capping, splicing and pollinated, they result in the formation of a primary uh, pri miRNA which is uh, with the hairpin uh, structures. So within the uh, nucleus, uh, this uh, uh, miRNA is processed by the drosha that is your RNAsA and its co cofactor uh, DGCR8 into uh, 7200 nucleotide uh, pre miRNAs which are uh, which is exported uh, to the uh, cyto transported to the cytoplasm by your uh, exportin 5 through the nuclear pores. So, afterwards this dicer another RNA, uh, RNA cuts pre mRNA to a double standard RNA in the cytoplasm and then uh, embraces the mRNA strands and its uh, complementary sequence. Helicase you know here. Uh, helicase continuously unwinds this duple duplex mRNA into short RNA strand called mature mRNA that is uh, which is in, uh, incorporated into your RISC complex containing the, uh, containing an uh, arginate protein that is your AGO, A AGO2. This incorporation will lead into the uh, RIC to, uh, will lead the RIC complex to the 3 prime UTR of the target mRNA resulting in mRNA cleavage or inhibition. So, mRNAs are also processed from the uh, introns of protein coding genes by the pre mRNA splicing machinery so that is your uh, Drosha or DGRC independent pathways here. So, the expression of these mRNAs which is also called uh, all the called uh, MI, MIR trons is correlated with the host gene expression uh, based on their location in either the introns or the splice site uh, junctions. So, this is they are very very important in uh, for uh, identification of several uh, cancer types. So, this is very brief. So, this is the summary of your modulated uh, circulating miRNAs in several prominent cancer types. So, you have uh, uh, like uh, in the gastric cancer, you have the MIR20A, 5P and uh, MIR22 were increased, were found to be increased in both plasma and serum samples. So, that is like uh, so before uh, uh, the clinical uh, 5 years before the clinical symptoms have appeared uh, the changes in MIR uh, 222, uh, MIR 378C5PE and MIR 7545P in the serum uh, they were uh, there is always there has been changes there has been increase in their uh, levels in the serum. So, that is five, 5 years before the clinical symptoms appear only this particular miRNAs are increased. So, now we can really understand you know how this modulation of the circulating um, miRNAs in this uh, pro is in the pro several prominent cancer types is an important it can be used as a good biomarker uh, for uh, during the uh, aid and uh, therapy during the treatment progress.
So, one more uh, very important uh, markers in this uh, the uh, from the blood again one more are your exoto exosomes which are with diameter of uh, 40 to 160 nanometers uh, and they are uh, uh, lipid bilayer membrane uh, vesicles and which are actively released by uh, most cells and stable in uh, uh, and they say stably circulate in most body fluids and usually these exosomes are heterogeneous group of membrane structures vesicles actively released released by uh, cells. So, your uh, MBBs or your um, um, membrane structured vesicle uh, bodies you know they are usually endocytic structures formed by the inward bonding of your endosomal membranes. So, just uh, endosomal membranes. So, vesicles accumulating inside inside of this uh, membrane vesicular uh, buds namely your intraluminal vesicles are released as exosomes by the fusion of this MBBs with your uh, plasma membrane. So, usually they are the new targets these exosomes are the new targets for liquid bi biopsies and uh, they are compared to the CTCs and CTDNAs ec uh, exosomes are like the they are totally are like bison themselves a total uh, uh, living cell uh, uh, secreted vesic vesicles they by themselves they are uh, organelles and they are more stable during circulation. So, they have been many technologies have been used to uh, uh, separate exosomes from various body fluids and to uh, detect uh, exosomal cargos. So, several, uh, so this is very very important. So, so now after uh, you, after they are detected again by the other NGS, you even have your QPCR, RT-PCR, ELISA, digital PCR, western blotting, again you have western microfluid dips which can detect your uh, exosomes. So, how do you detect exosomes by the fluorescence uh, detection, then the calorimetric detection, then you have the uh, droplet uh, digital PCR detections, then the single EV detections, then uh, you have the uh, SPR detection and the uh, by uh, electrochemical uh, detections you know these are all like for any other uh, particular calorimetric detections they can be employed. So, they are sometimes you know uh, molecular beacon uh, you know the, the so this is also very very um, uh, this was like they have uh, this is very important uh, tool for to detect your exosomes. So, this, uh, this so, it is very important to detect uh, highly sensitive and early, dis uh, early uh, detection of your cancer specific exosomes. So, coming towards uh, end of this uh, talk, we have really seen uh, in this whole uh, cancer detection methods, uh, we have uh, slowly uh, come, uh, come to understand what exactly are biomarkers, what exactly are the different, why do you need a screening, what is objective of screening and then we have totally gone on to, uh, to talk about different uh, cancer detection uh, methods for each cancer type and then we are coming to the liquid biopsy which is a new game changer and which is the need of the hour and which is the new changing tool for cancer det detection. So, we have really find uh, come into now after at the end of the session you will have an understanding what exactly are the entities you employ to go for liquid biopsies like your circulating tumor cells, your CTDNAs and then your exosomes and what are the high end technologies which we are using to adapt for uh, to give uh, make a clinician make a right decision to, to help in the towards the tre treatment uh, to give a better treatment outcome for the uh, patient. So, definitely to improve the surviving, uh, survival rate of the patients. So, we will really conclude by saying that liquid bi biopsies are the game changers for cancer testing. Thank you.